Now bless the Father that may be preaching easy. Send your word, Lord. Send your word to every person that is poor in spirit. That need a word from you. That need another touch from you. Send down all your anointing. Let it fall with us like rain. In the name of Jesus, we stand before you empty. Before full power. Fill us. Fill us now, God. In the name of Jesus, feed us until we walk the Lord. Throw your way around, let your glory be revealed. Let the devil know you're still in charge. Father, he will deliver and set free. What miracles? By your mighty hand. In the name of the Lord, we give you place for miracles, signs, and wonders. Thank you for the doors and making way. Thank you for lifting us. Thank you.
Hallelujah. He's yet blessing. He's yet working. Matthew 21, verse 4. Hallelujah. It reads as thus, and this was done. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughters of Zion, Behold, your king cometh unto you meek, to sit upon an ass, a colt, the donkey. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, brought the ass and the colt, put on them their clothes, and set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and, and put them together in the way. Understand the multitudes then that went before them that cried out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? The multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, of Nazareth, brother, of Galilee. The Lord bless his word, receive it in your heart. May you see it in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk to you as we conclude this month's series. The Lord is yet working, is yet moving. <clears throat> and I want to talk to you from the subject, when warriors suffer. When warriors suffer. When warriors suffer. I recently read a story of a man that, while sitting in the park, saw a cocoon of a butterfly. After much time had gone by, he saw a small opening appear. He sat and watched the butterfly struggle to force its big body through this little small hole. After many hours of struggling, it suddenly stopped making any progress, and it looked like it was stuck. The man thought to himself, how the butterfly must be suffering, maybe in pain, agonizing to break free. So the man decided to help the butterfly. He took a pair of scissors and snipped off the remaining bit of the cocoon. The butterfly then emerged easily, although it had a swollen body, small, shriveled wings. The man didn't think anything of it, sat there waiting for the wings to guard to support the butterfly to then take off and fly. But that didn't happen. The butterfly spent the rest of his life unable to fly, crawling around with tiny wings and a swollen body. Despite the kind heart of the man, he didn't understand that the restricted cocoon and the suffering, the struggles, and the agony needed by the butterfly to get itself through the small opening was God's way of forcing fluid from the swollen body of the butterfly into its wings in order to prepare itself for flying once it was out of the cocoon. My brothers and my sisters, many of us would love for God to be as kind-hearted as this man and cut us out of our cocoon so that we may become the dreamed butterfly. Instead, we perceive God to be cruel, unjust, and unfair. No one watches as we suffer painfully, suffer agonizing, suffer as we struggle to fight through a restrictive and confining and frustrating life-size cocoon. Now realizing that if our creator, just as the creator of the butterfly, Causes us to become exempt of the struggle, the pain, the agony, suffering. Then, when we emerge, we will too become too weak, too frail.
fail uh, to fly and soar. Child of God, the fight that you're in is necessary. The pain that you feel is necessary. The suffering that you are enduring is necessary. The struggles that you have to overcome is necessary. God is not punishing us. He is rather preparing us uh, to fly higher, to soar, to take us to another place that we've never seen before. My brother and my sister, I want to encourage you that all that you've been going through was necessary. Do I have somebody I can talk to in here and then I'm watching it? And I want you to know it was necessary. The scripture teaches us in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. My brothers and my sisters, we are warriors. Yes, we will fight and we will win. Yes, no cross, no crown. Ah, my brothers and my sisters, as we continue in this Lenten season, today is Palm Sunday. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost already. Uh, uh, it marks the beginning of Holy Week or Passion Week. It is the triumphant entry of our Lord and Savior as he prepares for his ultimate task and sacrifice of his very life. That being the cross of Calvary. Therefore, we, uh, when we contemplate suffering, we must recognize that the world is suffering. Yes. Millions have lost their lives due to this dreadful virus. Yes. Leaders are suffering. Families are suffering. Mentally, emotionally, and financially. Now I tell you that suffering is relative. Here we are in the United States of America. We believe that we are suffering because we can't travel like we used to. We combined in one location, quarantined in our homes, can go places that we would normally go freely. And if we go, we must wear a mask. And we believe that we are suffering. But when you see those in third world countries starving to death, no clean water, living in boxes, mud houses, no electricity. Do we still say and believe that we are suffering? Parents say they are suffering. They are suffering because they're stuck in the house with their children all day. Enrolled in virtual school. Uh, but there are some parents that have, that have lost their children. They are dead. Suffering emotionally from the pain of the loss of their child. Maybe their child is sick, stricken with cancer, or some other dreadful, debilitating disease. Ah, uh, but they are suffering. We all say that we're suffering. Me and the early church suffered at the hand of Saul, persecuting the other Christians. They were being beaten, jailed, and stoned, whipped, chained, and even died, just for simply being a believer in Jesus Christ. And here we are. We make our uh, church and the services participating even online, uh, even uh, 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 with other activities of the church, only if it's convenient, if it fits in our schedule. Even if we don't attend in person, but at least online virtually, uh, we do everything else but make the things of God a priority. When it fits in our schedule, when we have time. The apostles were martyred because of their unwillingness to give up their faith. Therefore, they suffered and died for Christ's sake. Maybe this is why we have so many weak Christians. We have so many immature believers. Because we are exhausted to start a series on how to receive a blessing. We are exhausted to start on how to be blessed. How to bounce back. Uh, we, we preach the message that we are coming out. We exhaust the messages of favor, declaring and decreeing eagerly prosperity and wealth. But we don't have too many sermons, not 
too many messages on suffering. No one, including myself, wants to suffer. No one wakes up in the morning saying, today is my day of suffering. No one embraces it, accepts it, enjoys it, revels in it, takes joy and pleasure in suffering. But Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. He says two things here. Firstly, we see the word cross. The cross was not in that day and time an emblem of worship as it is now. It was rather a symbol of suffering, a symbol of punishment, a symbol of death. The Romans perfected the all the cruel and torturous punishment. Therefore, for Jesus to speak, uh, every believer should take up his cross. It simply means that every believer should accept this way of suffering. Accept the life of punishment, cruelty, and torture. Suffering in oneself to deny oneself of carnality and fleshly and worldly living. I accept this suffering way as a believer. And secondly, Jesus states the word daily. Meaning as Paul would later state in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 31, I protest by rejoicing which I have in Christ our Lord that I die daily. Mm. It's not yeah. quiet here. Yeah. Uh, every, every day I have to die. I don't care if I'm talking to perfect people. I don't know about you, but even though I've been saved a long time, I've been feeling the Holy Ghost a long time. Every day I gotta suffer. I gotta die to my flesh. Yeah. There's time that that they got Jesus 
was coming to save them from the law of sin and death. While the people are celebrating, uh, there is a civil arrest. The government and the religious church would combine forces to try to destroy Jesus. Normally, it's one and the other. If the government is against you, the church will come to your rescue. If the church is against you, the government will protect you. But what happens when the government and the church come together to destroy you? The common Jew is being oppressed and taken advantage of by the Roman Empire only to be suppressed by the own. The Romans knew how to employ their own people, the Jews, to control them and choke any thought of uprising or siege of power uh, from the Jews. The religious elites wanted to preserve their own freedoms. So they did whatever it took to oppose and appease, rather, appease the cruel government, even by disenfranchising their own people. Therefore, the rich became richer, and the poor became poor. I'm not talking to somebody here. Corruption everywhere. Who, who could, could the people turn to? Who could the people trust at this very hour? The people were shocked, in shock, still reeling from the ravage and slavery of the Egyptians, bondage of the Babylonians, and now the tyrannical cruelty of the Romans, controlled by the religious Pharisees and scribes. They are tired of suffering. I'm going to look at somebody here that is just tired of suffering. I don't know of anybody that, 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 that loves suffering, that gets happy about suffering. That they come a time when you can say, enough is enough. I'm tired of suffering. Amen. This was one day in the time of the Jews that they could have hope and forget about their shock of suffering. Suffering doesn't discriminate. Black suffer. White suffer. Hispanic suffers. Asians and other ethnicities suffer. The young suffer. The old suffer. The poor suffer. The rich suffer. Everybody will suffer. Uh, I want to encourage you in John chapter 16, verse 33. Jesus said these things. I have told you that in me you will have peace. In this life you will have tribulation. Does anybody believe the word of God? But be encouraged. I the world. As we celebrate Paul Sunday, I miss our loyalty. Amen. I miss us being together normally. Amen. As a child, remember they would hang out palms when you come into the door. Yeah. So look forward into a cross. And we will sing songs and wave our palms and, and here, even at SGC, we will sing Hosanna in the highest. Let our king be lifted up. Hosanna. But while we are celebrating his entry, we are really celebrating the beginning of his suffering. This is the beginning. If Jesus suffered, child of God, no one escapes suffering. Uh, there's a song that says, there's a cross for everyone. There's a cross for me. Yes, uh, shall Jesus bear the cross alone? No. There's a cross for him. There's a cross for me. No warrior is exempt from suffering. Here we are in the text for a few minutes. Uh, there are verse 7 through 9, praising the King, the Messiah, in worship and in adoration. They all were around for the exquisite, elaborate, triumphant entry. But my question is, where were they when it was time for him to suffer on the cross? Where were they when he needed them the most? Where were the people, where were the crowds while he's on the cross and can use a hosanna? Y'all quiet. Uh, he can use praise and worship. He can use adoration uh, unto him. Uh, the people abandoned him while he was suffering. My brothers and my sisters, and I'm not getting close. Be careful how you judge me while I'm suffering. Because after a while, it's going to be your turn. I'm going to find somebody here. Because your turn is coming. Be careful how you can go with others and how and how they respond. Don't judge me how I respond to my suffering. Don't judge me how I react to my 
flyer will be placed on the Facebook on all social media Monday, Thursday. M A U N D A Y. Monday, Thursday. It's the night that Jesus was betrayed. He is into the Lord's Supper. He was taken, arrested, sent from judgment hall to judgment hall. And he was tried and condemned to death. This is when they prepared for the crucifixion. When they crucified our Lord. So on Thursday night, till the end, at 7.30, just one hour. One hour of service. Could you just watch with us? Just one hour, 7.30 to 8.30. We're all black. As we commemorate what our Savior did for us. And those of you that would like to celebrate Good Friday, I'm pretty sure there will be many services that will be going on. But we will celebrate Monday and Thursday. And then on Sunday, we hope to see you here in person, but if not online, as we take Holy Communion. And as you can see that we are dressed in our African attire, but this is an Afrocentric church. Charismatic by and Pentecostal, but yet Afrocentric. We celebrate our diversity, our brothers and our sisters. And all of us have come from Africa. No matter what shape and color you are, the lightest to the darkest. We celebrate Mother Africa. So every fourth Sunday will be Afrocentric heritage celebration where we can dress up uh, uh, our door in our African attire. Even on Sunday, Communion Sunday, you'll see a few things differently because we're going to be Afrocentric, centered around celebrating our heritage. So I should see you on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday for Holy Communion at 11 a.m. for our Hispanic service and then 12.30 our English service. The Lord bless you. As you're giving, as you're sowing right now, Blessed by the name of the Lord. Always remember.